Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game from the Banter Blitz Club. Uh, it's the semi-finals and it's uh, Alireza Firuja versus uh, Narayanan and uh, a funny short story before we check out the game. Uh, I already recorded this video uh, and uh, almost started uploading it but then I realized that uh, I mixed up the players as there are two Indian Grandmasters by the name of Narayanan. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I recorded the video using a, a profile photo of, of the wrong one as I didn't know how the gentleman looks like. And then when I checked, I, I, I saw, oh yeah, it never even crossed my mind that there could be two of them with the same name. Uh, but now uh, I'm re-recording it, uh, so uh, let's uh, dive straight into it once again. Uh, so, Alireza opens with e4, uh, and it's very rare that I will redo a video, pretty much regardless of uh, the mistake I make, so, uh, so this is one of the, uh, uh, well, uh, one of the examples where, where I will do so, uh, and sorry about that. Uh, yeah, uh, we have e4 by Alireza and uh, c5, the Sicilian defense is on the board, uh, we have knight to f3, d6, and now uh, just a knight straight in the center, as they usually do, knight f6, knight to c3, and a6, the knight of variation is on the board. Uh, we have bishop to g5, uh, e6, and f4, and here queen to b6, so all standard stuff, uh, going after the pawn here, and the queen to d2 is very popular here, going into the poison pawn variation, uh, but uh, Alireza probably... Uh, decided that uh, since he goes queen b6 of course he's well versed uh, in the lines of the poison pawn so he just defends it knight to b3 uh, we have knight b to d7 and now queen to e2 uh, preparing to castle queen side also e5 might be uh, an idea in the future uh, so queen to c7 uh, gaining more control over the e5 square but also getting the queen away from the b, b file so you can start pushing with b5 uh, we have queen side castle and now b5 right away uh, we have a3, for the moment stopping b4, and the bishop to e7, uh, just uh, a continuing development. g4, uh, now uh, Firuja continues to push on the king side, and rook to b8. Rook to b8 is a very exciting move, uh, because uh, this is a 3 minute uh, blitz game, 3 plus 2, uh, like all the games are in the Banter Blitz Cup, but... Uh, this position has been reached in 2018 between Alexander Grishuk and Maxim Vashiela Grav uh, in the Isle of Man tournament where h6 was played by, uh, by uh, MVL and the Grishuk continued bishop to h4 and uh, Grishuk was able to win that game. So rook to b8 is in fact an improvement on that game. It's the engine stop recommendation so Narayanan really uh, knows his stuff, uh, uh, how to play against white here. Uh, with bishop to h4, now preparing to uh, shift the bishop over to this diagonal, which will at some point uh, help out with the pushing of the e5 pawn, and also might have ideas of dislodging the knight with the g5. So here there is one game where b4 was played, uh, but here we have h6, and it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game. So bishop to g3, not allowing g5 to come with a double attack here, uh, now preparing to, uh, e5, and now b4. Uh, opening up the b file a captures rook captures and now bishop to g2 uh, putting the bishop on this diagonal black does the same wants to counter white's bishop and now h4 just continuing to push on the king side knight to c5 uh, of course you have to capture uh, because black will just capture on b3 and grab a pawn so knight captures with d captures uh, and now finally e5 and this is already one of the critical moments in the game uh, where the knight is attacking, obviously there is this tension between the bishops, so knight to d5 here is the way to go for black. However, uh, it's hard to decide um, uh, on everything when you're, uh, well, when it's a three minute blitz game. So knight to d7 was played, uh, and this is always very exciting when you have uh, this insane preparation, like that rook to b8 move uh, was uh, an improvement on the Grishuk uh, MVL game, and then you employ such uh, preparation in a three minute blitz game, and then at some point, uh, when you run out of preparation, uh, all hell will, will break loose. It's it's always like that. So here, knight retreats to d7, but now f5. Uh, really awesome stuff because now captures is met with e6, and now this uh, really uh, really comes alive as now ev everything is just uh, a, a problem here. If queen captures the bishop, then you capture the knight with check, and now after king to d8, you also uh, grab the light square bishop. 
so after rook captures uh, on b7, now you have rook h to e1, and it's just a, just a disgusting position to play. There's uh, really not, not much you can do here. Uh, queen captures, bishop is coming, and of course the bishop cannot move. If you move the bishop, then of course it's just the deadly queen to e8. Uh, and that's uh, that's just it. Captures, captures. The queen comes into the game, and it's just over. So after f5, well, we have queen to a5 now, shifting the queen to the queen side. Maybe some queen a1 action can be possible in the future. Uh, and okay, bishop captures on b7, and now rook captures on b7. However, uh, there is also the possibility of queen to a1 check, uh, but white always comes out on top. For example, king d2, you're going to capture here, and now white would have to find queen f3. There's the threat, yes, okay, uh, There's uh, you could capture the bishop, but you, don't, you never want to do that because of just rook b1. So the real threat is here, rook to d4 check, followed by queen captures the knight, uh, so you have to play queen f3. And now uh, white uh, just defended everything and, and white is fine. Rook d4 check can be met with king e1 and you are defending the knight. And this will always be met with just rook b1 uh, and black is just lost. Once you move the queen, you lose the rook and that's that's it. Uh, so after uh, bishop captures on b7, we have rook recaptures bishop on b7. And now uh, Firuja continues opening up uh, the position f captures on e6. Black has to recapture, there's nothing better, and now a beautiful centralizing move, queen e4 with a double attack here, uh, on the rook on b7 and also on the g6 square. Uh, yes, it's maybe uh, uh, phrased a bit funny, attack the g6 square, but you are threatening uh, to deliver check here and pick up the e6 pawn, or maybe the g7 pawn, it all depends on, on how the situation uh, changes. Uh, and here, queen to b6 is best for black. It uh, attacks the b2 pawn while defending the e6 pawn. However, Narayanan uh, went for queen to b4 check. He doesn't seem to mind this uh, pawn grab. Uh, and he says that if you go for that pawn grab, uh, then I will also have threats uh, of my own. So Alireza goes for it. Queen g6 check, king d8, and he grabs the pawn. Now, uh, th there's a lot of pressure on the knight here. For the moment, it's defended, but... Uh, you know, uh, the king is still on, on a very uncomfortable uh, square end file. So, queen captures on b2 with check, king to d2, and now again rook b4 with the idea of rook to d4 check, picking off the knight and, well, hopefully winning the game. Uh, and now bishop to f2, blocking the d4 square. Uh, and here, uh, uh, instead of bishop to f2, knight to e2 was a little bit better, since this allows black to uh, bring the rook into the game with, uh, with tempo, as it comes with an attack on the bishop. So here, bishop to e3 was played by Firuja, and now uh, rook to f3. Rook to f3 was played with the idea of rook captures bishop, followed by queen captures knight here, just grabbing two pieces for a rook. However, rook to f3 doesn't work. It, uh, it's a losing move, but there is one game that... Uh, uh, there's one <laughs> move that's really the best move for black, and it's basically forcing a draw on the spot. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find this uh, absolute best move for black w while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on spotting that uh, th uh, this is the only way to continue the game for black, as otherwise white will be better. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's still rook d4 check. Now point is after bishop captures, captures, there's the, well, the threat of, of just capturing the knight. So knight d5 going after the bishop here, but now bishop to b4 with check. Uh, knight captures and now finally rook to f2 with check. King to e1 and now uh, queen to c3 check, giving up a rook and now forcing a perpetual after queen e3. Uh, wherever you go, the queen will be able to uh, check the white king and it's always uh, going to be a perpetual. Check, check, king goes here, you check here, king goes here, you just repeat. If you go here, you check here, if you go here, check here, and there's no escape. But uh, impossible, of course, uh, that, to, to spot this in a, in a three-minute blitz game. And also, it uh, you immediately see that it doesn't yield anything better than a draw, and of course, maybe Narayanan uh, <laughs> was looking for a way to win. So instead he played rook to f3 with the idea of uh, rook captures bishop, but that's just the thing. Here I'm not going to ask you to pause the video because it's, uh, uh, well, it would be a bit too much. But here, uh, rook to f3 loses immediately to king e2. It's funny, but, uh, you know, such things happen in chess because you've now opened up an attack here. You're threatening checkmate and you're also threatening to pick up the rook. And black's initial idea of captures, captures and captures doesn't work because of rook d3. Now again, you either lose the queen or its mate. 
Uh, so that would be that would have been it for the game. Uh, if king to e2 was played, really uh, an amazing move. Uh, but Alireza went for knight d5, again going for the bishop here. And now Narayanan goes for rook to d4 with check. Uh, and you cannot capture the rook. If you capture the rook, then queen captures. And again, you reach this perpetual where uh, the, the white king is just uh, going back and forth. Uh, if you go, of course, to e2, you're getting checkmated. Queen to f2 will be checkmate. So after rook d4 check, king e2 was played, but now Narayanan has to continue uh, happily sacrificing uh, material. We have rook captures here uh, on f3, e3. Knight captures, at least you've uh, brought uh, one of the attackers back. And now queen to b5 with check. King back to f2 and now queen to b7. Uh, now the queen is uh, ready to help out with the defense. Uh, and ready to meet knight to d5. Knight to d5 is strongest here, uh, but uh, Firuja uh, decided to, uh, against it. Because here, yes, you can defend. Okay, this is now attacking e7, knight f8. This was the idea behind queen b7. Now the bishop is defended, but you can just trade everything. Uh, and go into a nice uh, uh, winning endgame here. Rook captures, pawn captures, and it's a rook against a knight would be winning for white. Uh, but Firuja uh, decides to go for a different plan. Queen f5 now threatens e6 to uh, get, get the pawn all, all the way to e6. Uh, we have queen to b4 now threatening queen, uh, rook to f4 to pick up the queen uh, as it will come with check. So king f3 not allowing it, and the queen to c3 now. Uh, and here... Uh, Firuja says, okay, rook d3, let's trade uh, as I'm up the exchange, so I don't mind trading, uh, or you go back. So queen to f5, queen to a5, Narayanan, uh, of course, doesn't want to trade, and now rook h to d1, doubling up on the d file. Queen b6, uh, supporting uh, d4 once again, and now uh, Firuja trades once. Rook capture c, captures, and finally e6. Uh, and here, uh, the point is you cannot capture here because of just rook captures here, and then, oh well. Uh, we can even show it. If captures, then captures. If king goes here, then queen to f7 is checkmate. If you go here, then you just lose a piece and it's game over. So after e6, knight to f6 was played, but now comes again knight d5. Again, offering trades, uh, which are, of course, not uh, not in, in black's uh, favor. So queen to c6, pinning the knight, uh, and now comes rook captures on d4. So bishop uh, c5, pushing the rook back. Uh, rook back to d3 and now king to e8. You have to you have to get out of this nasty pin because there are a lot of nasty discoveries here. You might lose your queen. Uh, so king to e8 and now c4. And it's uh, uh, just a beautiful move cementing that knight on d5. Not much black can do about this. Uh, any trades are of course in white's favor, so not, not much point in doing that. Uh, if you try this, then uh, you, even queen to f7 is just deadly. King goes here, you can capture here with check, king to c8, e7 is coming with, with e8, uh, just uh, crushing. So after c4, queen to a4 was played, but as time is running low on the clock, there is not much to do. Uh, Firuja uh, ended this game uh, very swiftly with uh, queen to g6 check. And now, of course, uh, if you go if you go to the D file, then any knight check towards the queen will pick off the queen. So not much point in doing that. So uh, Narayanan decided to walk into mate with king to f8, and Firuja delivered checkmate with queen to f7. So the mate is on the board, and we have this really, really beautiful, beautiful game. Uh, and it's often the case when you have such uh, be well extreme engine preparation thrown in a three-minute blitz game. Then when uh, both players run out of preparation, then just uh, e everything goes crazy. And those are the best kinds of games. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the first game of the match. A lot of you have suggested this one. That's why I showed this one. And uh, the match ended 9-6 to six in uh, the favor of Firuja. So Firuja will be facing Magnus Carlsen in the finals of the Banter Blitz Cup. And Magnus Carlsen predicted it. He said that uh, Narayanan has been playing incredibly well, but that it will be uh, really, really difficult to overcome Firuja. So he, he did expect Firuja to win. Uh, and now uh, two of them will be uh, in the finals. Uh, if you remember, uh, Carlsen defeated Sanan Surigov uh, in in the semifinals with a with a score of nine to zero, which is just crazy. So, uh, in these uh, times of lockdown where not much is going on in the world, uh, such a match is definitely uh, t to be promoted. Carlsen versus Firuja is going to be really awesome. Probably going to cover more than one game from that match, but but we'll see how it goes. 
So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Douglas Brintz, uh, Johnny Olsen, Shai Gross, um, uh, Joe Hugenroth, uh, and Matthew Finn for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and uh, whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.